Christmas is celebrated on December 25 and is both a sacred religious holiday and a worldwide cultural and commercial phenomenon. For two millennia, people around the world have been observing it with traditions and practices that are both religious and secular in nature. Christians celebrate Christmas Day as the anniversary of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth, a spiritual leader whose teachings form the basis of their religion. Popular customs include exchanging gifts, decorating Christmas trees, attending church, sharing meals with family and friends and, of course, waiting for Santa Claus to arrive. December 25th. Christmas Day has been a federal holiday in the United States since 1870. But have you ever wondered the real origin of this worldwide historical holiday? Firstly let's answer this question. When was Jesus Christ really born? In the Roman, pre-Christian era, years were counted from a Burbi Condita, the founding of the city Rome. Thus 1 AUC signifies the year Rome was founded, 5 AUC signifies the fifth year of Rome's reign, etc. Dionysius received a tradition that the Roman Emperor Augustus reigned 43 years, and was followed by the Emperor Tiberius. Luke chapter 3 verses 1 to 23 indicates that when Jesus turned 30 years old, it was the 15th year of Tiberius' reign. If Jesus was 30 years old in Tiberius' reign, then he lived 15 years under Augustus, placing Jesus' birth in Augustus' 28th year of reign. Augustus took power in 727 AUC. Therefore, Dionysius put Jesus' birth in 754 AUC. However, Luke chapter 1 verses 5 places Jesus' birth in the days of Herod, and Herod died in 750 AUC. Four years before the year in which Dionysius places Jesus' birth, Joseph A. Fitzmaier Professor Emeritus of Biblical Studies at the Catholic University of America, member of the Pontifical Biblical Commission, and former president of the Catholic Biblical Association writing in the Catholic Church's official commentary on the New Testament, writes about the date of Jesus' birth, though the year of Jesus' birth is not reckoned with certainty, the birth did not occur in A.D. 1. The Christian era, supposed to have its starting point in the year of Jesus' birth, is based on a miscalculation introduced by Dionysius Exegius. The De Pasca Computus, an anonymous document believed to have been written in North Africa around 243 CE, placed Jesus' birth on March 28. Clement, a bishop of Alexandria, 215 CE, thought Jesus was born on November 18. Based on historical records, Fitzmaier guesses that Jesus' birth occurred on September 11, 3 BC. How then is 25th of December placed as Jesus' birthday? Christmas. Roman pagans first introduced the holiday of Saturnalia, a holiday in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture was celebrated. Beginning in the week leading up to the winter solstice and continuing for a full month, Saturnalia was a hedonistic time when food and drink were plentiful and the normal Roman social order was turned upside down. For a month, enslaved people would become masters. Peasants were in command of the city. Business and schools were closed so that everyone could join in the fun. A week-long period of lawlessness celebrated between December 17th to 25th. During this period, Roman courts were closed, and Roman law dictated that no one could be punished for damaging property or injuring people during the week-long celebration. The festival began when Roman authorities chose an enemy of the Roman people to represent the Lord of Misrule. 
Each Roman community selected a victim whom they forced to indulge in food and other physical pleasures throughout the week. At the festival's conclusion, December 25th, Roman authorities believed they were destroying the forces of darkness by brutally murdering this innocent man or woman. The ancient Greek writer poet and historian Lucian, in his dialogue entitled Saturnalia, describes the festival's observance in his time. In addition to human sacrifice, he mentions these customs, widespread intoxication, going from house to house while singing naked, rape and other sexual license and consuming human-shaped biscuits, still produced in some English and most German bakeries during the Christmas season. In the 4th century CE, Christianity imported the Saturnalia festival hoping to take the pagan masses in with it. Christian leaders succeeded in converting to Christianity large numbers of pagans by promising them that they could continue to celebrate the Saturnalia as Christians. The problem was that there was nothing intrinsically Christian about Saturnalia. To remedy this, these Christian leaders named Saturnalia's concluding day, December 25th, to be Jesus' birthday. Christians had little success, however, refining the practices of Saturnalia. As Stephen Nissenbaum, professor history at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst, writes, in return for ensuring massive observance of the anniversary of the Savior's birth by assigning it to this resonant date, the Church for its part tacitly agreed to allow the holiday to be celebrated more or less the way it had always been. The earliest Christmas holidays were celebrated by drinking, sexual indulgence, singing naked in the streets, a precursor of modern caroling, etc. The Reverend Increase Mather of Boston observed in 1687 that the early Christians who first observed the Nativity on December 25 did not do so thinking that Christ was born in that month, but because the heathen Saturnalia was at that time kept in Rome, and they were willing to have those pagan holidays metamorphosed into Christian ones. Because of its known pagan origin, Christmas was banned by the Puritans and its observance was illegal in Massachusetts between 1659 and 1681. However, Christmas was and still is celebrated by most Christians. Some of the most depraved customs of the Saturnalia Carnival were intentionally revived by the Catholic Church in 1466 when Pope Paul II, for the amusement of his Roman citizens, forced Jews to race naked through the streets of the city. An eyewitness account reports, Before they were to run, the Jews were richly fed, so as to make the race more difficult for them and at the same time more amusing for spectators. They ran amid Rome's taunting shrieks and peals of laughter, while the Holy Father stood upon a richly ornamented balcony and laughed heartily. As part of the Saturnalia Carnival throughout the 18th and 19th centuries CE, rabbis of the ghetto in Rome were forced to wear clownish outfits and march through the city streets to the jeers of the crowd, pelted by a variety of missiles. When the Jewish community of Rome sent a petition IN 1836 to Pope Gregory XVI begging him to stop the annual Saturnalia abuse of the Jewish community, he responded, It is not opportune to make any innovation. On December 25, 1881, Christian leaders whipped the Polish masses into anti-Semitic frenzies that led to riots across the country. In Warsaw 12 Jews were brutally murdered, huge numbers maimed, and many Jewish women were raped. Two million rubles worth of property was destroyed. The second part we will discuss once more is the origin of Christmas trees. Mistletoe. Christmas Gifts And finally Origin of Santa Claus Keep watching Please if you are getting value from our video hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon, so that you will not miss any of our videos. Is free of charge, it also encourages us you are getting value from our videos. The Origin of Christmas Tree
Just as early Christians recruited Roman pagans by associating Christmas with the Saturnalia, so too worshippers of the Asherah cult and its offshoots were recruited by the church sanctioning Christmas trees. Pagans had long worshipped trees in the forest, or brought them into their homes and decorated them, and this observance was adopted and painted with a Christian veneer by the church. The origin of mistletoe, Norse mythology recounts how the god Baldr was killed using a mistletoe arrow by his rival god Hodder while fighting for the female Nana. Druid rituals use mistletoe to poison their human sacrificial victim. The Christian custom of kissing under the mistletoe is a later synthesis of the sexual license of Saturnalia with the Druidic sacrificial cult. The origin of Christmas presents, in pre-Christian Rome, the emperors compelled their most despised citizens to bring offerings and gifts during the Saturnalia, in December, and Kalends, in January. Later, this ritual expanded to include gift-giving among the general populace. The Catholic Church gave this custom a Christian flavor by rerouting it in the supposed gift-giving of Saint Nicholas. Then finally the origin of Santa Claus, the origin of Santa Claus had many phases of metaphorsis, dating from Nicholas who was born in Perara, Turkey in 270 CE and later became Bishop of Myra. He died in 345 CE on December 6. He was only named a saint in the 19th century. Nicholas was among the most senior bishops who convened the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE and created the New Testament. The text they produced portrayed Jews as the children of the devil who sentenced Jesus to death. In 1087, a group of sailors who idolized Nicholas moved his bones from Turkey to a sanctuary in Bari, Italy. There Nicholas supplanted a female boon-giving deity called the Grandmother, or Pasqua Epiphania, who used to fill the children's stockings with her gifts. The grandmother was ousted from her shrine at Bari, which became the center of the Nicholas cult. Members of this group gave each other gifts during a pageant they conducted annually on the anniversary of Nicholas' death, December 6. The Nicholas cult spread north until it was adopted by German and Celtic pagans. These groups worshipped a pantheon led by Woden their chief god and the father of Thor, Baldr, and T.I.W. Woden had a long, white beard and rode a horse through the heavens one evening each autumn. When Nicholas merged with Woden, he shed his Mediterranean appearance, grew a beard, mounted a flying horse, rescheduled his flight for December, and donned heavy winter clothing. In a bid for pagan adherence in Northern Europe, the Catholic Church adopted the Nicholas cult and taught that he did, and they should, distribute gifts on December 25 instead of December 6. In 1809, the novelist Washington Irving, most famous is the legend of Sleepy Hollow Wand Rip Van Winkle, wrote a satire of Dutch culture entitled Knickerbocker History. The satire refers several times to the white-bearded, flying horse riding Saint Nicholas using his Dutch name, Santa Claus. Drive. Clement Moore, a professor at Union Seminary, read Knickerbocker History, and in 1822 he published a poem based on the character Santa Claus. Towards the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in the hope that Saint Nicholas soon would be there. More innovated by portraying a Santa with eight reindeer who descended through chimneys. The Bavarian illustrator Thomas Nast almost completed the modern picture of Santa Claus. From 1862 through 1886, Based on Moore's poem, Nast drew more than 2,200 cartoon images of Santa for Harper's Weekly. Before Nast, Saint Nicholas had been pictured as everything from a stern-looking bishop to a gnome-like figure in a frock. 
Nast also gave Santa a home at the North Pole, his workshop filled with elves, and his list of the good and bad children of the world. All Santa was missing was his red outfit. In 1931, the Coca-Cola Corporation contracted the Swedish commercial artist Hadn Sundblom to create a Coke-drinking Santa. Sundblom modeled his Santa on his friend Luprentis, chosen for his cheerful, chubby face. The corporation insisted that Santa's fur-trimmed suit be bright, Coca-Cola red. And Santa was born a blend of Christian crusader, pagan god, and commercial idol. So this is all about Christmas origin and history. Always know the history of events before performing them. Do you agree about this Christmas origin? Put your answers down in the comment box. Or you previously have a knowledge of this history. Let me know your views in the comment box. Give the video a thumb up and also share to your social media pages it will be highly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Dance!